What is going on, everybody, and welcome on into the Stock Trends channel. Do we have a market update for you here today? Okay, we are right now, we are looking at finviz.com and we're looking at their heat map, okay? This is how the market finished up on Black Friday, and it certainly was a very bloody red Friday for a lot of portfolios. Now, we do see some green here, and that green comes out of Netflix. We see some of the diagnostics, the healthcare space um, are really kind of where we're seeing that green. MRNA, one of the stocks up 20% today, popping up well over $320 per share. Actually, touched nearly $350 today. But why did that happen? Let's dive into it, okay? So here we go. Stock market news live updates. This actually came out a while ago. But essentially, Wall Street, right here's the headline, Wall Street was rocked by new COVID variant fears. Dow plunges over 900 points. And as we make this video, we have really no idea uh, the details of this new variant. We don't know if it is necessarily deadlier. We don't necessarily know if it's worse. And we don't know how the market is going to take that overall. But what we do have is this news out of South Africa, and we're seeing some cases popping up here and there that this variant is spreading and we're starting to see some reactions, some more shutdowns across the world. One of the key lines right here to make sure you understand these two paragraphs, there's no evidence yet health officials are worried that the mutating variant could dilute or resist efficacy of vaccines, but there's no evidence yet. It goes without saying that it's still too early to tell exactly how big a threat the new strain poses to the global economy. And the bigger picture here to understand is that realistically, it's the restrictions that then come downstream of the variants and of the virus that actually cause the economic effects. It's not necessarily as much the virus itself, at least now as we've seen new variants after the initial, you know, big push and big spike, you know, back in early 2020. Okay, that aside, that's the news that we need to understand. What about the market? How is the market handling things? Here's SPY. So if you guys remember, we did that Thanksgiving market update. Go back a few videos to that. Uh, we talked about this and we had this little box. Here's our consolidation range. We broke out of that range. And we have a zone right in here. Some consolidation that we had here a couple weeks back from 458 down to about 454. 454 is also the prior all-time high here on SPY that we hit a couple months ago. So that is where it looks like we are coming right into range and maybe a quick little dip into next week, any potential bounce zone that we're looking at. So if technicals work out here and things you know work out uh, according to plan, as we can plan, of course, you never know how news shapes things. And yeah, it's just exactly how it is. You know, you get some news, some, some variant news and some, some crazy new virus news, right? And anything can change in a day, right? As we saw kind of what happened Friday. Now, I don't know if that was necessarily you know, as big of a reaction or will this be a longer lasting reaction compared to like how we saw things originally back at the original crash of the pandemic? I don't think it was going to be something like this. But again, you know, we'll see how this plays out. So a couple more dollars down on SPY and then a potential push back up into this range we're in. And we'll see how this plays out if we get a Santa rally into the end of the year, which is generally a week where we see, you know, generally a green market in the last week between Christmas and New Year's. So we'll see how it plays out. We still got some time for that, still pushing into the end of the month right now. So that's what we're looking at. Those are the targets to the downside. We'll see if those are met on the S&P. I do want to also pull up QQQ so we can get a good sense for kind of the NASDAQ and how the NASDAQ is faring. Actually, not as bad. It doesn't look as bad, right? So we had this big push. Yeah, it was down, but it wasn't down kind of as much, if that makes any sense. Those prior highs on QQQ was up here around this 383. So we'll draw that in. And then we also have a low that we hit a couple weeks ago, which was down around 387.50. So we're still above those levels. But if we do dip further on QQQ, I would expect us to come down to that 387 and worst case scenario here down towards that 383 in the short term. And then we'll see how things go after that. If we do need to come down further, then we could be looking at this area of consolidation. We saw roughly right in here, looks like about 375 on the Qs. So that's what we're looking at on QQQ. And then one last check. I do want to pull up IWM. Look at small caps. How are small caps doing right now? Well, take a look. They got better. We talk about small caps. We say, hey, you know, small caps coming right into that range. Looks like it wants to bounce at that previous area of resistance. And it tried to, but it did not after this market pulled back. However, small caps rebounded a good bit into the you know second half of the trading session on Friday, indicated by this decent wick to the downside, followed by a close in between, shows that we had some buying pressure. Some buyers came in. 
Now, this also lines up in a pretty interesting zone. Take a look at this. We draw a trend line off some of these lows. We pretty much touch that trend. So on IWM, we're roughly right in trend, uh, and the trend roughly is at 220. So under 220 on IWM, we may be coming down a little bit more towards that 215 to 210 level that we saw some of these lows over the past year. But that 220 for now holding, this could be, if the market recovers really strong, this could be a bounce right back up into that 230 range, and then we'll see resistance in that 230 to 235 range, and then we'll have to see if it wants to go for more into the end of the year, as small caps have been really consolidating for quite some time. So if the market stays strong, generally into the end of the year and the beginning of the next year, this could be a period where small caps could get picked up, and we could see some uh, traders looking to take on some more risk, going more speculative, playing some more penny stocks, playing those low floaters. We're going to see more of that overall in the entire market. Uh, we generally do, but again, we will see how this plays out. So let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on the market right now. Be happy to hear you guys down below. Like always, we have a technical analysis trading course down below, collaborated with Joseph Hoag from Let's Talk Money. Great channel. If you guys haven't seen his stuff, go check him out as well. Links and resources down below, two free stocks plus $5 in free crypto, all with Webull. That's this platform that we are using right here. We are on a different layout today. We're a little mobile, so uh, we are going in the mobile kind of office, I guess, if you want to call it that. Uh, and so this is the platform we use, two free stocks when you deposit any amount on the platform plus five bucks in the cryptocurrency of your choosing. Other links, resources, and our other channels linked in the description box down below. Check those out. Hit that thumbs up button, consider subscribing, and we'll see you guys in the next one.